Good morning students. Welcome to my video lecture on manufacturing of ceramic matrix composites. I am Nilanjan Das Chakladar, Assistant Professor, Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. This is a part of the postgraduate subject, Fabrication and Processing of Advanced Composites, ME61011. So in this talk, we will look into what is a ceramic matrix composite, properties of uh, CMCs and different infiltration methods. Ceramic matrix composites. CMC is a material consisting of ceramic matrix combined with a ceramic. So when we say ceramic, what we mean? Oxides, carbides, could be nitrides as well, in a dispersed phase. That is what is working as the reinforcement. They are designed to improve toughness of conventional ceramics the main disadvantage of which of the conventional ceramic is brittleness. They are reinforced by either long fibers or discontinuous fibers such as whiskers. So we already know by now what is the difference between whiskers, short fibers and fillers. Short fiber composites are produced by conventional ceramic process from an oxide, it could be alumina, on non-oxide ceramic matrix composite okay reinforced by whiskers of silicon carbide titanium borite aluminium nitride zeroncium oxide and other ceramic fibers so what do we see here the short fiber composites are typically produced by the conventional ceramic processes from an oxide or a non-oxide ceramic matrix reinforced by whiskers of silicon carbide etc most of the cncs cmcs are reinforced by silicon carbide fibers due to their high strength and stiffness now whiskers incorporated in a short fiber ceramic matrix composite improve its toughness and resist to propagation of cracks but the failure of the material cannot be decided, it is uncertain, it is catastrophic. Long fiber composites are reinforced by multi or monofilament fibers, failure of which is not catastrophic. Okay? Now properties of long fiber ceramic composites, high mechanical strength at high temperature, high thermal shock resistance, high stiffness, so we are talking about structural stiffness here, high toughness, high thermal stability, low density and high corrosion resistance at high temperature. Now silicon carbide matrix composites, these are typically fabricated by CVI or chemical vapor infiltration or liquid phase infiltration LPI methods. Now the detailing of these uh, fabrication methods of CMCs, this we will come in a uh, later video lecture. Of a matrix material into a preform prepared from silicon carbide fibers. What is the application? Combustion liners of a gas turbine engine, hot gas recirculating fans, heat exchangers, rocket propulsions, rocket propulsion components and immersion burner tubes. Next, Alumina and alumina silica, which are also called as mullite matrix composites. These are produced by sol gel method, solution gelation method, direct metal oxidation or demox, or chemical bonding. Application manufacturing of heat exchangers, filters for hot liquids, thermophotovoltaic burners burner stabilizers and combustion liner of gas turbine engines. Now carbon-carbon composites. So what are carbon-carbon composites? Typically they are denoted by this notation. These are fabricated by chemical vapor infiltration or liquid phase infiltration just like previous method of a matrix material into a preform prepared from carbon fibers. So carbon fiber itself becomes the precursor of carbon-carbon composite. Application, manufacturing of high-performance braking system, refractory components, 
hot press dies, heating elements and turbojet components. Now this is a comparison of different types of ceramic matrix composites. SICF slash SIC. What does it mean? Silicon carbide fiber reinforced silicon carbide matrix. Silicon carbide fiber reinforced alumina matrix. Silicon carbide whisker reinforced alumina matrix. Random oriented carbon fibers on carbon matrix. Unidirectional carbon fiber on carbon matrix. Bidirectional carbon fiber on carbon matrix. And three dimensional carbon fiber on carbon matrix. So we have seen different type of weaves UD, bi D, and 3D. And this is random. So what do we see here? The difference in the density, the tensile and compressive strength, tensile modulus, shear strength, coefficient of linear expansion, and the thermal conductivity. So typically you will find here the major difference is observed when we move from random to UD to by D to 3D. So what differences do we see? Differences in the bending strength. Okay. The tensile strength is also different depends on which plane we are looking into. So we have already seen for a three dimensional weave. Okay. So that means in one plane, if this plane is the, so this is X and this is Y. So this is the XY plane, whereas this is the Z plane. So along Z plane, you find the tensile strength is larger, whereas along X, XY plane, the tensile strength is lower. Why? Because this is already restricted due to the in-plane weaves. Okay. Similarly, you will find here the tensile modulus. They gradually increase from left to right. Then the random fibers, the UD fibers, by D fibers, obviously it would be a little low from the UD. And this is the tensile modulus in two directions. Now coming to infiltration methods of CMCs. All infiltration techniques incorporate the following stages of fabrication. First is fabrication of the preform. Second, deposition of the interface. It is interface, not interface. So I have already repeated this in the class multiple times. There is a very uh, significant difference between interface and interface. The fibers are coated with interfaces during either the filament production or after, after the preformed fabrication. Third stage is infiltration. The fibrous preform is infiltrated with a pre-ceramic fluid. So pre-ceramic fluid. So ceramic has not yet been fully formed and currently it is in a liquid form or a fluid form. The fluid contains either ceramic matrix particles or a substance which may be converted into ceramic as a result of chemical reaction. As a result of chemical reaction. Then thermal processing. Ceramic forms in the space between the fibers when the pre-ceramic fluid is heated. So here the question comes of thermodynamics. Okay. So next we will look into different types of infiltration techniques. What are they? Polymer infiltration and pyrolysis which is PIP. It's a very widely used. Ceramic matrix is formed from a low viscosity pre-ceramic organometallic polymer. So basically it is a polymer derived ceramic which is infiltrated into a preform as a result of pyrolysis. Second, chemical vapor infiltration. A pre-ceramic gaseous precursor. Why gaseous? Because it's a vapor. 
infiltrates into the fiber reinforcing preform and converts into a ceramic as a result of chemical deposition okay much similar to chemical vapor deposition third reactive melt infiltration or rmi the preform is infiltrated with a liquid metal which produces ceramic matrix when reacting with the surrounding substance reacting reactive liquid silicon infiltration so silicon carbide matrix forms during the reaction of molten silicon infiltrated into the preformed with the porous carbon so if the carbon is porous molten silicon is getting infiltrated and silicon carbide matrix is being formed direct metal oxidation or the demox process ceramic matrix is produced from a molten metal commonly aluminum oxidized by the surrounding air okay so alumina aluminum matrix slurry infiltration the matrix is formed from a slurry containing fine ceramic particles which infiltrates into the preform and converts into a ceramic after drying and hot pressing after drying and hot pressing then the sol gel infiltration a sol a solution pre ceramic precursor infiltrates into the preform undergoes polymerization or gelation this word polymerization we have come come across while learning about thermosets and then is converted into a ceramic at an elevated temperature so the sol gel infiltration now types the last type is the combined infiltration methods so whatever we have learned now we will find a mix of two methods together and to get the augmented benefit what we mean is 1 plus 1 greater than 2 so number 1 is slurry infiltration plus pip infiltration of the preform with a pre ceramic polymer blended with fine ceramic particles or slurry followed by pyrolysis okay so pyrolysis okay slurry infiltration plus lsi the fiber reinforcing preform is infiltrated with a slurry containing silicon carbide particles which fill part of the free space the preform is then infiltrated with molten silicon reacting with surrounding car carbon and forms silicon carbide so whatever part is remaining of the free space now it is being taken care by liquid silicon infiltration chemical vapor infiltration and liquid silicon infiltration a porous carbon preform is prepared by cgi method and then it is infiltrated with molten silicon which reacts with the surrounding carbon and forms silicon carbide matrix okay so the last second part or the last part of the method 2 and 3 they are similar okay because both have the lsi technique okay so thank you for this particular lecture hope you have enjoyed